On average, women in Scotland still earn £182 less a week than men due to occupational segregation. Well, that's interesting because the gender pay gap for full-time workers in Scotland is about 6%. So if that's £182, that means that males on average must be earning £3,000 a week. I think we've got a bit of Diane Abbott maths going on here in the Scottish Parliament. So the pay gap is partly to do with men and women choosing different careers, that's true. But that's referred to here as occupational segregation. Segregation, what does that conjure up? It conjures up the seating plan at the mosque, men on one side, women at the other. It conjures up, uh, you know, blacks have to sit at the back half of the bus, etc. It's really silly language to use. If they wanted to be even more ridiculously melodramatic, they could call it occupational apartheid. I haven't heard that yet, but watch this space. You heard it here first. That if we had a society in, way in which everybody was just able to get on on the basis of merit, we'd have 50-50 between men and women across all areas of our society already. Uh now that's absolute nonsense. It's based on the assumption that men and women are the same, but they're not. Men and women tend to choose different careers. Men and women tend to have different priorities in terms of work-life balance, etc. Nicola Sturgeon appears to assume that all women are like her in that personal ambition and career progress have been the dominant factor in her life rather than devoting time to family. That's not a criticism particularly, but Nicola Sturgeon seems to assume that all women are like that, uh, but they're not. So she starts off by ignoring the facts about male and female differences. I've got a book about male and female differences. Here it is. Okay, it's got 950 pages and spoiler alert, it doesn't spend all those pages saying that men and women are actually exactly the same. They're different. So Nicola Sturgeon's argument is founded on just factual error. And let's see what she builds on it next. It's because there is systemic barriers to women that we don't. And if we're going to overcome those systemic barriers, then we've got to take action in the range of ways that I've already spoken about. So having eliminated the correct explanation, Nicola Sturgeon needs a new one. And she's got it there, systemic barriers. It's all society's fault. And the government needs to intervene to sort it all out. This is the classic cultural Marxist social justice method. You divide the world into groups, oppressed groups and oppressor groups. In this case, women will be the oppressed groups, men would be the oppressors. And then you look at statistics relating to these groups. Any statistics you find where they appear to favor uh, the oppressed group, so it turns out better for women, you just ignore those. But any statistics you find where it appears that the oppressors are favoured, then you cry injustice and you need to engineer society to make reality match with your theory. Now, this philosophy goes completely unchallenged within the Scottish Parliament, including by the party that calls themselves the Conservative Party. They just go with the flow as well. But what we're going to see next is a Conservative MSP getting as close as you'll hear anyone getting to challenging the consensus. The Economy Committee also heard evidence that in some areas men suffer from a gender pay gap in relation to women. Now, while this may be less of a problem than that affecting women, what steps is the Scottish Government taking to ensure a balanced approach which addresses the issue where it does affect men? Well, in one sense, that's a good question. In another sense, it's a bad question. I'll deal with the positive first. According to Nicola Sturgeon's philosophy, where one sex is paid more than the other, that indicates an injustice. The government needs to step in to solve the problem. So according to that philosophy, if women are paid more than men in an area, then that should be seen as a problem to solve. So Gordon Lindhurst is making a good point in that regard. It's a relevant challenge to Nicola Sturgeon. Now, if you think about that in practice, there's a bit of a problem with it. If you find, for example, that there's a large corporation where the men are paid more than the women, so you decide you want to even it out. Uh, men paid a bit less, women paid a bit more. But then let you find out that the business is in three divisions. In one of the divisions, women are paid more than men. So in that division, you try and reverse it, get the women paid a bit less. But maybe within that division, there might be five departments, maybe in two of them, the men are paid more and three of them, the women are made, paid more. So you try and do it department by department. Within each department, there might be a number of offices. Do you try to do it office by office? 
you end up with a reductio ad absurdum, and it just doesn't work. That's analogous to the Russian doll problem, which applies to secessionist movements, uh, nationalist movements. If you're interested in that, you could look that up. So it's a relevant challenge that Gordon Lindhurst has made to Nicola Sturgeon on the basis of her own philosophy. Right, what's bad about the question? The bad thing about the question is that Gordon Lindhurst accepts the philosophy behind it. He completely goes along with the social justice mindset that inequality equals injustice. About a year ago, Gordon Lindhurst wrote an article in the Herald about the importance of closing the gender pay gap. He completely buys into Nicola Sturgeon's philosophy. So he can't strike at the root. He can only try and bend a twig here and there, and that's what he's doing. What someone needed to stand up and say, First Minister, your whole argument is wrong. Differences do not imply injustices, so your whole argument doesn't get off the ground. First Minister. Yeah, I, I, I think... And it makes the point, doesn't it? I think currently Ruth Davidson is slowly sliding <laughs> under that desk <laughs> in front of her right now. Look. Well, that's provoked quite a reaction. And that's a reaction to someone just gently chipping away at the edge of their whole philosophy. Imagine the reaction if someone tried to blow the whole thing out of the water. The, the whole essence of equality is that men and women are treated equally. So yes, in, in, in the spirit of consensus, I, I kind of accept the underlying premise of the question. But anybody who can look at the problem of uh, the gender pay gap right now or the any gender inequalities that exist in other parts of our society and conclude that the problem is we've got to do more to help men rather than women I think kind of misses the whole point here. And now Nicola Sturgeon's got a problem here she's got two ideas in her head that are in tension with each other she claims to believe in equality men and women should be treated in identical ways in equivalent situations that would say that the women should be paid a bit less where women are being paid more. But she's also got in her head the idea that men are the oppressor group, women are the oppressed group. So these ideas are in tension. Which one is she going to choose in response to this question? Well, it's quite clear which one she chooses. Equality takes a back seat and the oppressed oppressor narrative dominates. So Gordon Lintos rocked the boat a little bit here. But ultimately, he's reinforced the consensus. He agreed with the view that men and women are the same, so they should function in society in statistically identical ways, and where they don't, that's a problem to be solved. He endorsed that. The Conservative Party in Scotland and the UK also enthusiastically endorse that view. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Gordon Lindhurst had his knuckles wrapped by Ruth Davidson behind the scenes after asking that question. Now, if you vote Conservative and feel that by doing that you're challenging the cosy, Holyrood, progressive, politically correct consensus, think again. <laughs>